Good morning, saints and friends. I'm Cookie and he is. I'm Harp. <laughs> and we are Hastings Bible Fellowship. Yes, we are. And we're here today to share with you yet again and one more time. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> the truths, some truths from the eternal word of God that will awaken us to who we are in him, who he is in us, and who we are to one another. We are indeed in this together with God. We don't work against him. We work with him. We are cooperating with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So before we get started, my very own Superman here, Harvey, is going to pray, and then we will get started. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, today we're so thankful for your goodness. We're so thankful for your wonderful works unto the children of men. We're so thankful for sending. We're thankful for Jesus. Yes. Who died for our sins according to the scriptures. Who was buried. Who rose again from the dead according to the scriptures. Who ascended up on high. Be seated at the right hand of the Father. As our high priest and king. From henceforth expect till the enemies are made the footstool. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Thank Jesus, you, Lord Jesus, for your redemptive virtue and power. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace and mercy. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your anointing that destroys the enemy. Every year. Amen. Amen. Now. Yes. We've been in the message, Unity of the Body of Christ. Yes. For many weeks now. We're so thankful to all of you who have been on this journey with us, whereby we can learn about the redemption of heaven, earth, and man through Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yep. And last week, uh, we had a footnote uh, that, uh, uh, a footnote, I mean a bookmark. A bookmark. I mean, we had a bookmark <laughs> in uh, Colossians 1. So let's go back over there. And we are um, in a place to where we need to answer the question, who is Jesus Christ? So if I put a title on this, that's, that's what my title would be. Who is Jesus Christ? The answer to that question lead us to the answer to another question, what is the gospel? Those two questions are kind of linked together. And so we are going to be starting uh, back at uh, the part where we put our uh, bookmark. <laughs> because we were learning about who, who is Jesus Christ from what Paul was sharing. Remember, Paul was called into action by Epaphros. And Epaphros was the bishop of the work at uh, uh, Colossae, you know. And some yahoos came down there and said, you know, <laughs> Jesus Christ is not God. He's a good man, but he's not God. He uh, did some healings, but he's not God. He, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, had a good message, you know, of... Uh, uh, of uh, grace and mercy, but he's not God. And uh, Paul was called in there to set them straight according to apostolic power. Now, uh, we got into this because uh, Paul was a wise master builder, according to what we read in 1 Corinthians 3. Remember, Paul, as this rhetorical question, is Christ divine. In other words, in Paul's mind, the body of Christ and Christ is one. And so he asked rhetorically, is Christ divided? Keep that thought on hold. Now, go back to where we were. In fact, start at verse 13, first, <laughs> uh, Colossians 1. 
verse 13. Verse, uh, first, verse 13. Start start there with our reading here. I'm so excited. I got the joy of the Lord on me. I'll tell you what. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, start right there. Okay. Verse 13. For he hath rescued us and has drawn us to himself from the dominion of, of darkness and has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved sons. Stop. Stop. For he has rescued us. Who, who rescued who? Jesus has rescued us and has drawn us to himself from what we need to be rescued from was the, the dominion of darkness. In other words, that's where we used to live. That's your old address. Okay? And has transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. Now, any of y'all that work for a company of some kind or a large corporation, they generally have um, uh, businesses in different cities, different states, even different countries. Okay? And they come to you and say, listen, I know you've been working here in Detroit. Okay? But we want you to transfer to Paris. I believe that would be a... Um, a uh, what's the word? What's what's a promotion? Promotion from Detroit to Paris would be a promotion. Well, we got a promote a promotion here. We were in the kingdom of darkness, and we were transferred to the kingdom of His beloved Son. He He is God. God has rescued us through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. He has rescued us and has drawn us to himself. When somebody's drawn to you, what does that mean? They come closer. Not repelling. God's not holding us at arm's length. Uh-uh. He has drawn us close. He has drawn us to himself. Yeah. From the dominion of darkness. So while we were in the dominion of darkness, we were away from him. He took us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his, his beloved son to draw us near. In whom we have rede redemption. In other words, whatever we owed is paid. Okay. Woo! Because of his sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation. 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 You ever had a flight canceled? What does that mean? You can't get on that plane. You got to get another one. You got a little bit of a layover layover until you can catch the to get to the place you want to go well he says because of his sacrifice jesus sacrifice resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of sins penalty what does that mean for the wages of sin is death it's been canceled Keep going? Yeah, yeah. Oh, keep going. Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of picking our bookmark up here. <laughs> he is the exact living image, the essential manifestation. We talked about the word manifestation before, mm -hmm. right? That means there it is. You can see it. Okay? The essential manifestation of the unseen God. You ain't seen God, but we see Jesus. Yeah. He is the manifestation of God. Oh, my God. Foundation. Foundation. Yeah. Who is Jesus? We just read it right there in verse 15. Yes, we just read, read it one more time. He is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible, the firstborn, the preeminent one, the sovereign, 
and the originator of all creation. Stop. This Man. is this is the resume right here, right? What have you done? That's what he's done. Yeah. Now, right? Now, the author, by the Holy Spirit of this verse, is the Apostle Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Back in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul asked the rhetorical question, is Christ divided? We just read who Christ is right there. In Paul's mind, the notion of saying, I'm of this, I'm of that, I'm of Apollos, I'm of fill in the blank, I'm of Jimmy, Billy, Sue, Bob, Bob. <laughs> You can see the rhetorical <laughs> nature of that question there, mm -hmm. is Christ divided? And so Paul says, who is Apollos and who is Paul? We are just servants, just servants. through whom you believe. Yeah. And I am the apostle Paul here. I laid the foundation that other builds upon it. The foundation that Paul laid in his ministry we just read it right here in verse 15. That is to say, when we finally answer the question, who is Jesus? We can then set our face like flint, talking to you ministers now, to build on that foundation, Christ-centric doctrine. And remember, Apostle Paul was sharing all of this because he half rose to the bishop there and Colossi said there were yahoos coming down here saying, you know, Jesus is not God. If you're going to say Jesus is not God, that's Antichrist teaching. Antichrist. And during the first century ministry there, the apostles of the Lamb had difficulties with those individuals who were saying that Jesus is not God in a real way, and they were called Antichrist by the Apostle John. More on that later. Yeah. Now, read verse 15 again. Okay. He is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible, the firstborn the preeminent one, the sovereign, and the originator of all creation. All right, now, the creation includes heaven. It includes earth. It includes all of existence. As an apostle of the Lamb, Paul is making no bones here. He's telling you that no man has seen God at any time. And that which declares God is the Lord Jesus Christ, the man Christ Jesus. This is foundationless. And as a wise master builder, Paul laid this foundation. In other words, Paul understood what Jesus told Peter. You know, the Lord came in there saying, uh, who do men say that I am? <laughs> and then they said, some say you're this, some say you're that, some say you're that. But who do you say I am? And what did Peter say? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then the Lord said, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you. But my Father revealed. And you are Peter. And upon this rock of revelation, of who I am, I will build, watch this, my church. Not a church. Not a church. My church. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is built on the revelation of who is Jesus. We just read who Jesus is. He is 
God, he reveals the Father. No man comes into the Father except through the Son. You're going to acknowledge the Father, Yahweh God? There's no way to acknowledge him unless you acknowledge the Lord, Jesus Christ, is the exact representation of God the Father. This is the foundation Paul the Apostle laid in his gospel ministry everywhere he went. Said a different way, the chief claim of Christianity is that Christianity is Christ Jesus as the Lord. So now we know what Lord means. Lord is a term that refers to the fact that he is the supreme ruler of the universe. Foundation. But there's more to it than that. Read the next verse, verse 16. Um, for by him... Him all, who? Him who? For, okay, get in. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created and exist through him, that is by his activity and for him. And he himself existed and is before all things, and in him all things hold together. His is the controlling cohesive force of the universe. He is also the head the life source and leader of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will occupy the first place. He will stand supreme and be preeminent in everything. Now, who is he? Yeah, it's yeah. Jesus. It's Jesus, yeah. Now, it's Jesus. Think this through. Paul asked the rhetorical question, is Christ divided? So therefore, in Paul's mind, whenever we mention the word Christ Jesus, we are talking about him and his people. Never separate his people from him. How would you be if we separated your head from your body? Dead. Our Lord Jesus Christ is, is not, not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. This is the uh, uh, foundation aspect here. When you say Jesus, you're talking about him and his people. Him by whom all things were created. Remember, in answering this question, who is Jesus, we are dealing with what is the foundation of our faith. The foundation of our faith is not Paul. Was Paul crucified for you? Was James crucified for you? No. Was uh, <clears throat> Peter crucified for no. you? Was Apollos crucified no. for you? Neither was Bob, whoever he is. No. Neither was Jimmy, Sue, or Bill. Almighty God put himself in a body, came to earth. Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. He put aside that old covenant and established that new covenant for us to enjoy. And so we therefore have as our foundation him who is God, human form, and him who made all of existence. Get a revelation of how big our God is. We just read it. But wait, there's more. 
verse 18. Read one more time. He is also the head, the life source and leader of the body, the church. Stop. I'm going to talk to you ministers uh, right now. I want you to hear me very clearly. The church is built on Jesus. Therefore, you are an elder in the church. But the church is not yours. Jesus said, I will build my church, did he? You don't own any people because you didn't start the church. The church has been around. A long time. And notice uh, when uh, Jesus said this uh, to Peter back in, uh, you know, Matthew and so on. He said, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build, build, not start, build my church. Remember, the church includes New Testament, Old Testament people. And his sacrifice covers us and them doesn't so therefore when it says here he is the head the life source and leader of the body the church Paul said it best when he said is Christ Christ divine the revelation of that rhetorical question Christ includes him and his people. So you have his people, Christ, the Father. The Father and Christ are one, yes? Mm -hmm. Christ and his people are one, yes? Mm -hmm. Christ is the mediator between the Father Yahweh and his people. You see that unity there? That's what this is saying down here. He is also the head, the life source and leader of the body of the church. He is the beginning the first born from the dead. The chief outcome of the gospel is the abolishment of death. Jesus abolished death by doing what? By being resurrected from the dead by cheating death. So when the old saints say, ain't no grave's gonna hold my body down, they got it right. It didn't hold Jesus down. It's not going to hold down any of the people of faith when Christ gets back here. So therefore, Christ Jesus occupies the first place in everything. Not the Pope, Peter, Phil, David, Kenneth, Jimmy, or Susan. Why? They didn't die for us. Therefore, the church does not belong to them. So somebody comes along and says, yo, are you starting a church? Wait. Excuse me? Excuse me? Listen. The church has an author already. Mm -hmm. His name is Jesus. Now, if you say, are you are you going to start a gathering place? Okay. I mean, some place where we can gather together, and sit, learn, talk, commune, fellowship. Okay. You can do that. You can do that. But the church? The church already has an office. <laughs> he already did all that. So now go down to verse 19. For it pleased. Whoa. Uh -oh. For it pleased the Father for all the fullness of deity, all of it. the sum total of his essence, mm -hmm. all his perfection, powers, and attributes to dwell permanently in him, the Son, 
and through the intervention of the Son to reconcile uh -oh, uh -oh, all things to himself, yeah. making peace with believers through the blood of his cross. Through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. You know, that covers all of existence. There's nothing else. Yeah. So the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ provided redemption blood for the entirety of creation. Not just for the saints. The entirety of the planet, the plant life, the animal life that fell when Adam sinned, as well as uh, you know, man fell. We know that, but the consequence of Adam and Eve's uh, disobedience, you know, from Genesis, it affected plant life. It affected animals. It affected the entire earth, and it affected heaven. And the redemption of all of that comes under what Jesus did at Calvary through the blood of his cross, the incorruptible blood of Jesus Christ. That blood is on the heavenly mercy seat forever. And when the Lord God looks at it, he says for all time, those that believe in him are sinless, righteous, holy, sanctified, and one with him. So when Paul says, is Christ divided? <laughs> you got to be kidding me, man. Christ is his people, and his people is Christ. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Christ is God. We are not God. But through our union with him, Christ is us. And we are Christ. We're talking about oneness in him. The Father is not separating his son's body from his son's head. And that's it. That's what you got to understand. Remember, this is foundational. This is what Paul is laying out here to all these yahoos that say, hey, Jesus is not God. He can't be God. He's a good man. He's not God. He, you know, he did some good things, you know. Uh, you, a lot of the religious people, you know, the uh, various religions out here, they recognize Jesus and mm -hmm. he's a good guy, you yeah. know. And Yeah, we honor Jesus and so forth. Yeah. But it, they got to go to the next step, though. Christ claimed, I am God Almighty. If they would acknowledge that, they would be saved. Mm -hmm. And until you acknowledge that, mm -hmm. you won't be saved because it takes a God to redeem you. Now, verse 21. And although you were at one time strange, 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 vernacular, you put it in the vernacular for you. Uh, you're married. Your husband or your wife decides they don't want to live with you no more. And so they move away, but they don't divorce you. That's a, that's an estrangement. In other words, not living up to your part of the covenant. Got me? Okay. And although you were at one time estranged, in other words, we weren't living up to our part of the covenant with God, and alienated, and hostile-minded toward him, Participating in evil things. Does it sound like you before you knew Christ? Yeah. It, that's who he's talking about. Yet Christ has reconciled you to God in his physical body through death in order to present you before God holy and blameless and beyond reproach. Yeah, that's a propitiation there. And he will do this if you continue in the faith. What's faith? Giving God what he asked for. Giving God what he asked for. Well-grounded and steadfast 
not shifting away from the confident hope that is a result of the gospel that you have heard. In other words, you're going to hold fast to the stuff I've already taught you. I'm not bringing nothing new. I'm not saying anything new. I'm not, there's no addendums, no codicils to what I've already taught you. Hold fast to that. And if you do, uh, which was proclaimed uh, in all creation under heaven and, uh, and, of which, and of which gospel I, Paul, was made a minister. Yeah, see, this is the foundation he's laying. See, the gospel. It's Christ. It's Christ. Pure Christ. and simple. Nothing added. No, no fillers. No, um, you know, no, no, no additives. It's Christ, Christ. and Him crucified. Mm -hmm. and him crucified. Remember, Christ is God, and therefore God manifested himself as a man yeah. and died for us. Yes. This man, Jesus of Nazareth, laid aside his God attributes and died a cruel death because the sins of the world was placed on him. And that killed him. But because he was not guilty, he could be raised from he the could dead. He be raised from the dead, and he lives forever with that immortal, incorruptible blood. That blood is better than bulls and goats because that blood will be on that mercy seat for all time. Remember, the blood of the bulls and goats only lasted a year in the old covenant. But the blood of Jesus is forever. And therefore, the Father can righteously, the propitiation now, declare you sinless, holy, righteous, sanctified, one with him. Christ is not divine. Now, go down to verse 24. Now I rejoice in my sufferings on your behalf, which is, this is Paul. And with my own body, I supplement whatever is lacking on your part of Christ's affliction on behalf of his body, which is the church. Mm -hmm. The church is his body. In this church, I was made a minister according to the stewardship which God entrusted to me for your sake, so that I might make the word of God fully known among you. Verse 26. Before we go on. Okay. Okay. This is what I like about my brother Paul. He lets you know how and why he is doing the things he's doing. He doesn't take any credit. He doesn't take any credit. You know why? Because he know what he was. And he know what God has made him. He recognized that he was a sinner. And now he's recognizing that he is made brand new in Christ Jesus. Anything I have is because of him. Okay? So, you think I'm a good preacher? You think I'm a good this? You think, no. Let me tell you, let me tell you the truth. I was. In this church, I was made. I was made. I didn't make myself. I was made a minister according to the stewardship. In other words, God gave me something. I'm just I'm just here to watch over it, to do what it is he told me to do. To the stewardship which God entrusted to me for your sake, for you, so that I might make the word of God, so that I might make the word of God, not my own words, the word of God, fully known among you. That is the mystery which was hidden from angels and mankind for ages and generations, but is now, but has now, but has now, now. been revealed to his 
saints, God's people. Are you God's? God, I'm, I'm, I'm a God person. You God person. Yeah. God has revealed some things to us. A lot of Holy Spirit of God. Yeah. It was a mystery. All that blood, all them animals, all that law. Do you think they knew why they was doing? Do you think they had an understanding of the depth that that blood was going to represent someday? Not a clue. Not a clue. But this was what God had them do to get Jesus here. Mm -hmm. A school minister to bring us to Christ. To bring us to Christ. When Jesus came. Mm -hmm. And we've been brought to Christ. And some have said yes. And some have said no. And you know what that, you know what, you know how God feels about that? It's your choice. Yeah, he never forces anybody. He never forces. Choose. He's laying out, this is my plan. This is what I have for you. This is my love for you. This is what I was willing to, to lay on the line to win you back. Do you want it? Do you want it? I'm going to woo you. I'm going to draw you to myself. I'm going to let you know the reality of my love and my mercy. But the day comes. And that day for many of us is death. If you haven't chosen Jesus before your death, it's too late, baby. You, forf you forfeit the promises of God. Forever. Today, while you got life in your body, is the day of salvation for you. Yeah. If I was you, and I've been you, I would choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. I would choose him. Let me continue. Verse 26, 27? 20, 27. Yeah. God, God, in his eternal plan, chose to make known to them how great God in his eternal plan chose to make known to them how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery which is Christ in and among you the hope and guarantee of realizing the glory. Look at that. Is Christ in you? Then the guarantee is in you. Is in you. Because the spirit of adoption is the spirit of Christ. And the spirit of Christ is the Holy Spirit. And Christ is God. Christ is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Mm -hmm. The Father is God. That's the three in one. That's the Trinity. Yeah. The hope. There is one hope, one faith, one baptism, one hope of our call, one faith. Christ is not divided. <laughs> we proclaim him, warning and instructing everyone in all wisdom, <clears throat> that is with comprehensive insight into the word and purposes of God so that we may present every person complete in Christ, mature, fully trained, and perfect in him, the anointed. Now, what was Paul <clears throat> preaching? Foundation. See what he was describing on here? He was describing because you know, Bishop Epaphros was, uh, you know, having some issues with <clears throat> Antichrist teachers. You know, Jesus is not God. So Paul just sort of lays it out here. Jesus is God. Jesus created all things. Jesus is the head of the church. Jesus. 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 Jesus is all. Is there a song like that? Jesus is all? Who sang that song? 
Oh, don't make me think it's <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> just, just understand here that um, when Paul says he proclaims him, see what the gospel is? The gospel is newsflash. Him Jesus. who was crucified for you, Jesus. Man. Mm -hmm. Verse 29. For, th for this I labor, often to the point of ex exhaustion, striving with his power and energy, which so greatly works within me. Now, I'm going to talk to you ministers one more time. This foundation, Paul said, no other foundation can be laid other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And so you got to make some decisions about whether you're going to preach Christ-centric doctrine or not, because, uh, you know, that is uh, going to receive some rewards. You know, God's going to reward the work of ministry. This is not about your salvation. Your salvation is secure. This is about the work you're doing in ministering truth. Get a revelation about the need to proclaim Christ-centric doctrine. Don't you want your reward? Yeah. God's got a reward for you. Now, with respect to this, turn to 2 John. I'm just going to start this part of it. We're answering the question, who is Jesus in this message today? Now, John is just like Paul in terms of apostolic authority. Both of them proclaim that Jesus is God. And both of them, therefore, fought the fight of faith against those who would say that Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh. See, the, the, the phrase, Jesus Christ did not come in the flesh, is uh, a phrase that John uses. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is that there were those in the land that said that, uh, you know, Jesus Christ is not God come in the flesh. So that phrase, Jesus, not, Jesus Christ, has... Uh, uh, not come in the flesh. It's basically saying uh, there are those that are saying that Jesus Christ is not God. You're going to see this when we're reading this. Uh, this is uh, Second John. Uh, there's only one chapter here. Mm -hmm. So start with verse 1. Second John 1 in the Amplified. The elder of the church addresses this letter to the elect chosen lady and her children whom I love in truth and not only I, but also all who know and understand the truth. Because of the truth which lives in our hearts and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace intercom a sense of spiritual well-being will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ the Father's Son in truth and love. That's hello. That's hello. I was greatly delighted to find some of your children walking in truth, just as we have been commanded by the Father. Now I ask you, <clears throat> lady, not as if I were writing to you a new commandment, <clears throat> excuse me, but simply reminding you of the one which we have had from the beginning that we love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. And this is love, that we walk in accordance with his commandments and are guided continually by his precepts. This is the commandment, just as you have learned, have heard Third. from the beginning that you should always walk in love. For many deceivers, Heretics posing as Christians. Oh boy, here we go. Posing as what? 
posing as Christians. He called them what? Deceivers. Deceivers. Heretics, posing as Christians, have gone out into the world. Did they come back home? No, they're still out there. <laughs> they're still out there doing what they do. Those who do not acknowledge, acknowledge and confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh, bodily form, this person, this kind, who does this, is the deceiver and the antichrist, that is, the antagonist of Christ. Yeah, you see that phrase? They don't confess and acknowledge. 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 Yeah, you see that? They don't confess and acknowledge. To confess is to acknowledge truth. They don't acknowledge the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. In other words, they don't acknowledge that Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh. They don't acknowledge that. And John calls them deceivers, deceivers. heretics, yep. posing as Christians. Antichrist. He calls them antichrist. In other words, they are not proclaiming that which is foundation. Who is Jesus? Christ. God. Jesus is God. Jesus is the creator of all existence. Jesus then is who he says he is. When we proclaim the gospel, we're presenting him. We are privileged to build upon that foundation. Now, verse 8. Watch yourselves. Stop. Watch. Is not, <clears throat> it's not uh, ethereal. It's not, you know, like you're watching for, you know, cars. It's inside. It's spiritual. Okay? Because the Holy Spirit recognizes somebody or something that's not from God. And it was learn to attend to the spiritual voice on the inside of you. You can do it. You can do it. He is the teacher of the church. So if his job is to lead us and to teach us in all truth, if someone comes bringing a message of something that's not from God, your inward self, that inward connection that you have with God will make you aware that's not truth. That's that's off. That's that's the, that's the signal I used to get. Why does that sound so weird? That's his job. And what happens is we get so interested in pleasing people that we ignore the unction from the spirit. And then we get led astray. We get led into all kinds of doctrine and we wonder how do we get down this false road? We ignored the warning signal. Warning, warning, flash. warning, flash, flash. <laughs> this is not Christ centric. This is not Christ centric. Oh no. Yeah, you see that? Right. Yeah. All right. So watch yourselves. That's what he's saying. Watch here. Watch yourself so that you do not lose what we have accomplished together and that you will receive a full and perfect reward when he grants rewards to faithful believers. Yeah, see, this is a reward for the work, the work. you do. Yeah. Right? And the Lord's going to pour it out on those who are involved with Christ-centric doctrine. Doctrine that builds upon the only foundation that can be laid, which is Jesus Christ. And so those that say that Christ is divided. Caution. That is not Christ centric. You see that? See, Paul and John agree. There is one body. Keep going. Is this, this is this John the fisherman? Yeah. 
John the Fisherman. Yeah. One of them sons of thunder. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul, who was a trained Pharisee, they agree. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be different. Couldn't be different men. One was a man that worked with his hands and 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 in the in the, as a fisherman. And one was a learned man. And made tense and, and made stuff tents. like that. Uh, just understand that these are great apostles of God. What, and apostolic teaching yeah. says there is one body. There's one body. That one body has a head. That head is the creator of the oh. universe, the Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 So go down here and finish this up. We are drawing nigh. Yeah. Yes, so we got to put another bookmark in there. Okay, we're going to bookmark, bookmark this. Bookmark this? All yeah. right. We'll, uh, we'll finish Second John 1, yeah. uh, 9. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mrs. Stokes. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, you know what we're getting ready to do? We're going to um, uh, our dear old... Um, Um, we're going to um, 1 Corinthians 11, 23, because mm -hmm. we're going to do our, enter into our communion together. Yes, we're so glad that you all are participants so, um, in the communion. Whatever implements you have at your house, some liquid, some bread-like substance, or potato chips, or whatever you got, because it's not what it is, it's why it is. Okay, whatever you got. Whatever you got. Because God, what we're doing here is remembering not our works, His work. His work. His work for us. Okay? So 1 Corinthians 11 23. This is what they call the Lord's Supper. It's what we often call the memorial dinner. Some people call it the Eucharist. Some people call it the Eucharist. I don't use that word much because I really don't even know how to spell it. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. For I receive from the Lord himself that instruction which I pass on to you that the Lord Jesus on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he, would, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this represents my body. We just read about the church. The church is his body. The fullness of him. The fullness of him. So when he said, this is my body, he was talking about us. Us. Who... Most of us, all of us who are alive now hadn't been formed yet. We didn't exist. But he had you on his mind. Before he was about to sacrifice his life, he was thinking about each and every one of us. He was on the cross. We were on his we mind. We were on his mind. This represents my body, which is offered as a sacrifice. He is not substituting himself for us. He's not. He knows he's the head of the body, and you can't do anything without your body attached to your head. I'm sacrificing myself for the body that belongs to me already. for eternity, for everybody that decides to come into life with Christ Jesus immediately becomes my body. I'm taking your sin. I'm taking the penalty of your sin on my own body so that you can take on all my righteousness, all my goodness, all of my connection with God. That's the exchange. My God. Do this in affectionate remembrance of me. Take, eat. Hallelujah. 
Lord Jesus, I'm so thankful. I am so thankful for your great love that you have towards your body. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant ratified and established in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in affectionate remembrance of me. The blood. The blood. Why? Why? My blood. To represent the blood of that old covenant, of all those goats and lambs and ducks and whatever pigeons and doves and all that all the lambs all that blood year after year after year after year every time you had a baby you had to shed blood every time you did something you did something wrong on the sabbath you had to kill something so you could be made clean so you could go into the temple so you could yeah blood 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 year after year blood of Jesus once for all times for all time there's never going to be another land there's never going to be another land one lamb once his blood cleanses once for all take it drink it all of it Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are symbolically proclaiming the fact of Jesus, of the Lord's death, until he comes again. And guess what? He's coming again. If he came once, he's coming again. If he didn't come, we're wasting our time. And I'm not wasting my time. He came. He paid the price for sin. He opened the gates for us to enter into the very, the, the very gates of God, the very presence of God. You who are in Christ Jesus have access to the Father today. Now, this moment in time, you are free to enter into the gates, to enter into the very presence of God. He's not withholding his presence from his children. No more than he would withhold himself from Jesus. We are the body of Christ. God has opened himself. He has drawn us near to himself because of the sacrifice of Christ. Yeah. In Christ alone will I glory. Yes. And we glory in the Lord. Our righteousness is of him. Yes. Our, the love we love you with is from him. We don't have anything to give you that God has not given. Amen? Amen. 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 So saints and friends, my God, meditate on the things you've learned today. Think about them over and over. Listen to this teaching over and over. Renew your mind on a daily basis. That's job one. You're born again? Yeah. The, your job is to renew your mind. To what? What he says about you. You got to get a different image of your position in the body. Your place in this world. In, in this kingdom. God has transferred us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And many of us are still thinking like the darkness we're from. You have had a change of address. In the words of the Jeffersons, you moved on up. Moving on up. Okay? So you got to think like you're in a new place. You have a different empowerment on your life than you used to have. You have to recognize where you live. I'm in the kingdom now. I, I'm in this world as an ambassador, but my 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 eternal my home is in glory. I'm just sent here to do a work. 
when I'm done, I'm going back home. I'm going to the place that's been reserved for me. Okay? So, the things we are teaching, the things we've been teaching for the last 37 weeks? 37. I don't even know what number. 30, it's 38. 38, 38 weeks. This wow. is part 38. Part 38. The body of Christ, just in case. You and then there's other ones we've taught on. So, over 40, over 40 weeks we've been teaching. And what we want you to understand is these things are not taught because we don't have advanced to do it. They're taught we're doing our part of the kingdom. We're doing our part of the work of Christ. That's all. And we want we want those who hear these words to grow, to acknowledge that they are more than they thought they are, not because of us, but because of Jesus. Let's move on up. Let's change our minds. Let's get ourselves in agreement with God so that we may do the work of God. See, the cross, you got to line up with God so you can do the work. Yeah, you got you got you got work to do. So renew your mind. Stop saying oh, one day I'm going to no, no, today. Today is the day that you say, God, I'm going to agree with you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So, don't forget, Hastings Bible Fellowship can be, uh, you can catch us on Facebook, you can catch us on YouTube, and you can also catch little snippets of us on the gram at Hastings Bible. On the gram. Everything else is Hastings Bible Fellowship. On Instagram, we are Hastings Bible. We love you guys. We appreciate. We do. We appreciate you giving us your donations of time. We appreciate anybody that is praying for us. We thank God for you. We are thankful for you. We do pray for you. We don't know. We don't, we don't need a name to pray. Don't even need one. But thank you for your faithfulness to God. Thank you. And I can't wait to meet you either on this side or on the other. Love you.